everyone, it's Carol from Crinkled Path Journals, and I'm back with a memory keeping episode from my second memory keeping junk journal, which is an altered cookbook. And I have some stuff that I got from Meg from my Happy Mail that I'm going to incorporate into this page. I've been working on the folios just a little bit, just doing the back covers a little collage very little and it's kind of getting me in the Christmas mood and I got to thinking today about some of my favorite homemade gifts and they weren't necessarily for Christmas but two of them on my page today I'm going to talk about were Christmas gifts. I think that as junk journalers we put so much into what we create and we want them to be special gifts for the people who receive them. And it makes me very reminiscent of how precious some of the things that were made for me were to me over my lifetime. And I still have this and I'll show it to you by the end of the video. So what do I have for the page? I've got this little raccoon and I have this poncho ad for a pattern that came in a work basket that Meg gave me. The raccoon was fussy cut from a children's book. I have this ribbon that Meg gave me. Love the colors for the 70s memories. I have these little felt pieces that she gave me. Just because they match those, I thought maybe I could incorporate them. And then I have this slide and it is actually of me and I only pulled slides to put into my journals with me in them that were not good photos when put on the big screen so like this one I probably had my eyes closed or something but when you're looking at it this tiny you're not going to notice that so I love that the Kodak logos match the other items I have from Meg and I'm going to stick them down on the page and tell you a little bit about some of my favorite homemade gifts. Did you have something that somebody made for you homemade that stands out in your memory now that I'm bringing this up? I hope you'll share it in the comments below. Let's get this glued down. And I think this is probably clogged again. That tip is not doing me any good because I keep having to take it off. <laughs> but I'll try and be sparing here with my fatter tip. I talked about this when I was opening the mail from Meg. That my aunt, that played more of a grandmother role for me. My Aunt Lydia, she made me and all her grandkids shawls for Christmas one year. And then I also had a friend of my mom's who made me a poncho. And so I thought that this was really fun to have this very 70s advertisement for a shawl kit pattern on the page and then we can embellish it with some of these great 70s colors. So I want to come in just a little bit away from the rings so that this will close. This journal is stuffed and I think I only have one more page after this one to get it finished. So if I'm remembering correctly and I'll have to pull out my parents slides and try and find the picture of us girls all in our shawls. But I remember the colors being pinks and purples and whites. And she had four granddaughters and then me. And there was only one of them younger than I. But we were all lined up in front of the Christmas tree with our shawls on in the picture. And I remember it very well. And then I've talked about that she's the one who also made me a patchwork quilt out of my cousin's old clothes and she 
also had made me the pilgrim costume with the little pinafore and the bonnet with the brim. And I did a page about that early on in my first journaling book, I'm pretty sure. So she was an incredibly talented sewer and knitter or crocheter. I, can't, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was knitting or crocheting, honestly. But I know it was very beautiful. And I liked it very much. And I wore both her, the one she made me, and then the one that my mom's friend made was red, white, and blue. And I really liked that. That one was a poncho. And then the one my aunt made me was a shawl. It was just a giant triangle that you put over your shoulders. I love this. <laughs> and then her daughters were the ones I stayed with in pre during preschool instead of going to preschool. And they made me a raccoon pillow. And you might remember if you were around in the 70s. And I think they still kind of make these sometimes. This raccoon's going to need to go on something. Let me find a little piece of paper. In the fabric department, they have two pieces of the graphics. And cut them out. Put them facing each other. Sew around the edge and leave a small opening. And then you stuff it with stuffing. And it was a pillow. And I have my parents super 8 movie that I have had transferred to a DVD and I crack up every time because I was so excited about that pillow in the movie. It was just a very simple little raccoon pillow but because they had sewn it together and put it together with such love it was a very precious thing to me. So what do a raccoon and a poncho have to do with each other? Well they're handmade gifts. <laughs> I love that it gives you all the colors to choose from right here. So I was thinking about maybe putting this on here like that. Like you can pick the color and then that'll correlate to what color the shawl will be. My cousins were very crafty and very talented uh, and they really spent a lot of time teaching me about art and always had little projects for me to do and they took me to ceramics class when I got older and I'm going to have to do some kind of page on that eventually. Now what I'm interested in doing, set this aside, with this is cutting a mitten and then I'll explain when I show you this book. Thumbs a little wide. <laughs> okay, there's my mitten. It's not the mitten story. <laughs> Maybe I'll put that there. And then I'm going to put my little slide Maybe up here in the corner. What's on the back side? Okay, nothing I think that I'm going to hurt. In order for me to be right side up, the slide has to be upside down. And I want to put me over the white so you can see through it. So it's going to kind of be cattywampus there. Let's see, where else could I put it? Boy, decisions, decisions. Don't want it sticking up too far to where it's sticking out of the book. I think I'm going to do that. And then this here. And the mitten here. Okay, now I feel like something's got to go down here. Maybe some words. How about just this memories since I'm getting really close to the end here. Yep, that tip is just not wanting to cooperate. I feel like I have to soak it every time I use it after I use it.
There we go. That's down. And I feel like I want to distress these a little bit because everything else is very muted. Now it's blending in a little more and I've got room to put my journaling inside here. But before I take off and do journaling, I'm going to move this to the side and show you my book that my cousins who made the raccoon pillow also made me. And it has some stains on it and it's not machine washable. It is a nice heavy cotton double panels stitched together. And it is a quiet book. And this is what we took to church with us so that as a little child, I could sit quietly and have something to busy my hands. And you can tell it is falling apart <laughs> a little bit and it's missing a few pieces, but it warms my heart so much to see the love and care they put into this book for me to stitch all these little felt pieces which are so soft. So it was the little bear and he used to have buttonholes that worked. <laughs> and he has a little zipper. And then inside he has a little I love you heart. And then the next page has these little cards they made that has the name of the color and it has the numbers. And so you can either match the name and the color or you can put the numbers in order one to 10. And then we have a little purse that opens up and it used to have a comb in it now all it has is this little coin purse with a snap. And my mom used to give me some little offering money to put in there, a dime or something, you know, so that I could pull it out and put it in the offering plate. And then we have the bunny where you learn to tie your shoes and it's missing one of its shoelaces and this other one is very discolored and it's barely long enough to tie. I don't know if that's the original one or not and then it has snaps here as well and the felt has gotten very fragile so I'm very carefully snapping it apart. And then we have a very fragile little buckle and then this is like the greatest treasure ever in this pocket I have the original little golden books and they have tiny little stories Richard scary stories Mary's dollhouse the farm bunny rabbit Tugboat Tom, Farmer Pig, Polite Puppy, Peter the Painter, and he spills his paint and after, he paints the black bear brown. And he's quite creative. <laughs> the Learn to Count Owl, A Tale of Tales. The pig's trying on other animals' tails to see if he likes them better. <laughs> uh, Harry's airplane ride. He ends up crashing in Mrs. Pig's pantaloons. <laughs> uh, let's see. The train. And Brave Elephant. Makes friends with the mouse that he's afraid of. Anyway, these books, I looked them up on eBay 
a couple years ago and they are very pricey <laughs> but they are so adorable and I wouldn't part with them for anything they got to stay in here then we have this little velcro page yes there was velcro in the 70s <laughs> so I have a little ladybug and this is real rabbit fur on his tail that they sewed in and the dragonfly is missing his tail the bunny has a little carrot that moves around but all of these little things come off and you can put them where they belong or you can be silly and put them wherever you want like a little bit of dust in this book then we have the night owl window so little curtains and these little owls come out in their tree and you can Put them on the branch like this or tell a story with them to yourself and then this is a flatsy patsy doll and the one that was originally in here uh, her hair was completely matty and she was bent so much that like her wires were sticking out and so one year my husband and i were in san francisco in chinatown and I saw this change out the doll that was very badly falling apart. And then this was supposed to be to learn to tie a bow. And this is the original ribbon that they had in here. And the gold trim is coming off of it. Precious thing. And then this is why I put a mitten on the page. Because this was the size of my hand. And you could put your hand in the mitten and try it on for size. And then we have a lion with yarn, which if I were to unbraid it now, I think it would disintegrate, <laughs> but it was so you could learn to braid. So that's my quiet book, my precious quiet book that my cousin spent long hours. Like these letters are hand stitched on with a teeny tiny blanket stitch. And it's just a very precious handmade gift that I love so much. So I wanted to make sure that I put something on the page to remind me of this. So I'm going to do my journaling now. Thanks for coming along today. And if you have not seen the video for the contest, I'll link it below and you start by emailing me and letting me know that you want to be in the contest and send your YouTube and Instagram handles so that I know who you are and how to best get back to you if you win. And then there are many more ways to enter. So you'll want to watch that video thoroughly to learn how to get extra entries. It's also written in the description box for that. So I hope you'll email me and join the contest and you can email as many times or as few times as you want to get me the information for the other entries. Thank you for sharing your story about your favorite handmade gift in the comments below because I love hearing your stories and your story matters. See you in the next video. Bye bye.